So hello everyone. So in this video we are going to see the trap number four in the Stafford Gambit. So in the previous video I have talked about the Stafford Gambit. Uh, I have explained the basic concepts of the Stafford Gambit. And uh, in the previous video I taught you all the three traps, uh, all the three traps in the Stafford Gambit. We have been seeing Stafford Gambit for so long. I think uh, we have been seeing Stafford Gambit uh, in the past three videos. So it's worth learning. Actually, learning Stafford Gambit is completely worth because uh, it, it's like uh, 90, uh, 90 million player in uh, in this world will fall for the Stafford Gambit because Stafford Gambit is one of the most logical Gambit when you compare to the other Gambit. For example, England Gambit, Tennyson Gambit, then uh, Blackmore Gambit. Danish Gambit. When you compare to these Gambits, actually Stafford Gambit is one of the most logical Gambit. And nearly Stafford Gambit works against every top place. Every top place. Not like after 2000. So below 2000, uh, FIDE rating, uh, actually Stafford Gambit works, works, works very well. Okay. So after um, here in this position, this is a basic position for Stafford Gambit. So here, so we can see in this video the trap number four is here what if black should do if white plays the move e5 so e5 is uh, is one of the most annoying move for the uh, black as a black side when you're playing stafford gambit in the black side when you are playing stafford gambit in the black side when you see this e5 immediately you think that Oh my god, my knight is misplaced. You are think that, you will think that the knight, uh, the knight is misplaced. You are gonna play misplace the knight. For example, here you should not play knight to d5. You should not play knight to d5. Knight to d5 is uh, naturally very good move. Actually centralizing the knight, when knight reaches to the center, that knight is called as octopus knight, controls 8 squares in the center, very powerful knight. But instead of playing knight d5, you play knight to e4. This is also an octopus knight. Same thing. It controls 8 squares. It even controls the uh, key squares. And even a more important square that f2 square. So this is a very very good move. So extremely good move. Knight e4 is an extremely good move. For example, both the lines. Okay, we can see the both the lines. So first we can see what happens if the white plays d3. If white plays d3, this is a terrible blender. D3 is a terrible blender. If white plays D3, you play immediately bishop c5. Immediately play bishop c5. Okay, bishop c5. So after bishop c5, first we can see what if, if the white play bishop e3. If white plays bishop e3, you take the bishop on e3. If you take the bishop on e3, then white will play f into e3. So here there is a tactical variation to win the exchange. To win the exchange, you are uh, by doing this tactic, you will be up by exchange. Uh, if, if you can't find the variation to win the exchange, exchange means you are winning a rook for a knight. If you can't find that variation, please pause the video now and think for a while, uh, like one to two minutes, and resume the video back again. Okay, so because tactical understanding is all about chess. Chess is all about tactics. Chess is all about all about tactics. Luck is nearly will not work in chess. Uh, when you are playing higher level in chess, higher in higher competitions, luck will not help you. So here, so I will tell the variation. So after f into e3, queen h4 check. After queen h4 check, g3, g3. This is the only way to block the check. We can see what happens if the white plays king to e2. King to e2, this is a simple made one. Queen f2 is a simple made one. So, g3 is the only good looking move. If white plays g3, you play knight into g3, h into g3, queen into h3, you are winning a material. So, we are, this is the one, one of the sideline in the uh, knight e4 trap. Actually, actually, e5 trap. In e5 trap, this is a sideline. We can see the main line. So, if white uh, doesn't play bishop e3, Let's say if white captures the knight on e4. If white captures the knight on e4, they wanted to lose the knight. Because actually this knight is tactically protected. Tactically protected means, I'm telling in the sense, if you capture this knight, you lose something even more powerful. 
even more powerful. For example, if you violate the tactical protection, this knight is, as I told you previously, this knight is tactically protected. So if you take the knight on e4 by playing d into e4, you are receiving the knight. Actually, you are winning a knight. In what cost? You are winning a 3 point in the cost of 9 point. So you are losing 6 point. You are trading in a loss. So trading in a loss is always not a good thing. It's not at all a good thing. So after D into E4, you pause the video. Okay. So those who can't, fi can't find the continuation, please pause the video. Think for a while and uh, resume the video once you find the variation. Because in this position, white black to play and to win the white queen. This is very simple, simple combination. Very simple combination. Bishop into bishop into f2. If white plays, if white plays king into f2, you can take the free queen. Okay. So instead, if in this position, instead, if in this position white plays king to e2, then also you can win the black white queen then also you can win the white queen uh, that move is not the queen into d1 immediately that move is not the queen into d1 immediately rather you are gonna play bishop g4 bishop g4 is the move after bishop g4 i think this is a mate checkmate yeah and this is not a checkmate sorry sir this is not a checkmate white can capture the bishop on f2 after white captures the bishop on f2 queen into d1 you are officially winning a full queen for a knight for a knight you are winning a full queen this is completely winning for the black i hope everyone enjoyed my video so if you like my video please share subscribe thank you